Hey, it's Jillian Barbary on this episode. I have a really special guest who's actually been a friend of mine for a very long time in this yeah. town, Greg Grunberg. Yes. And everybody <laughs> thinks that we had an affair many years ago, and what? I said that is not true. Oh, yeah. No, he's been married well, this forever. Is not the, this is not the first time you and I have been under a Swarovski yeah. crystal uh, a disco ball. <laughs> yes. Let's just put it that way. Oh, yeah. So where we record, there is a disco ball here, and uh, it doesn't work. Like back in the day when I'd be hanging the from it, those were the days. <laughs> those were the days. By the way, this is... Is one of the coolest spots ever. Thank you. I mean, I, I have done a bunch of podcasts. We all do each other's podcasts, yeah. and whatever. And there's no shortage of podcasts. That's for but sure. I think one, my gardener has one. Yeah. yeah <laughs> this one is so unbelievably cool. It is great, right? Yeah. Thank you. This was the former man cave for an ex husband. And then it became a man cave for my son. And then I said, well, mommy's got to work. So we kind of transformed mm -hmm. it. I love it. And I'm joined, of course, by Liz, who is my friend and who has been in my life for 20 something years. So she knows where the bodies are buried. Yep. Yep. Hi, everybody. Hey, Liz. Thanks for joining us. Now, Liz and I did have an affair. Yeah. Oh, yes. interesting. Yeah. So, you know, nothing. <laughs> you are my not type. Here. Yeah. You oh, really are my type. Yeah, he oh, totally it. is. Now, <laughs> let me ask you, because you are so busy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, I loved you in A Star is Born. I want to start with that because I know it was just such a, it was just such a beautiful role that your relationship with Bradley Cooper. I went in not knowing much. Yeah. I, you knew that Bradley and I had known each other for a long time. I did know that, but I didn't know that he was writing, directing, singing, and doing all this. And so when I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, is he really drunk? Like, you guys just had a... He's mm -hmm. so natural. And right. to know that he's a teetotaler, like he doesn't drink, is incredible because yeah. he's a great actor. Doesn't drink, doesn't swim, by the way. What? Really? Swims in the movie. I mean, he does swim. He knows how to swim and everything. But he's had ear trouble oh. like forever and he's clearly fixed that we were on alias together for the people that are listening okay so know. right you guys went back because you're you, people know you from so many things lost alias heroes is that when yeah. you met uh bradley was on was on alias, alias and he played will tippin a lot of people don't remember because alias was two shows uh in one really there were yeah. you know she had two lives that was the whole that's, sh idea that's of the right. show. But her spy life was so much more interesting, and the fans love that. So they really kind of put the other normal stuff to the side. He played Will Tippin, this uh, yeah. reporter for a local newspaper, whatever. And so you had these characters on that side that I never worked with that were like, hey, what about us? Because they kept writing for us. Yeah. And that led to frustration from some of those actors, especially someone like Bradley, who's oh so God. brilliant. He's so ugly. It's a shame. But I mean, outside <laughs> of that. But he, his frustration was, you know, we, we are very, very close friends. There are certain Certain people I see, you're one of them, by the way. Thank you. We talk every yep. so. I mean, we don't see each other at all. I think the last time I saw you was at HLN. We were doing some stuff with Dr. Drew, I yes. believe. Yeah. Um, but you feel like you you get to, the, and you were born and raised here. You're a local, which is such an anomaly. But at a point, you sort of get to know everyone. But coming up with Bradley and to see him shine like this, it must have been really great it was great it was rewarding and then out of that frustration to see that success come because everybody yeah. i mean everybody around bradley jj you know is my best friend yeah. whatever bradley everybody around him we all knew that this was going to happen yeah he's it was just that, a matter of time yeah he, oh, and, for sure. and, and planets have to align right yep. the opportunities yep. have to be there that's right but he is so smart so you've got all this brilliant yeah. storytelling ability and obviously charisma obviously. and also bradley's got something that a lot of actors don't have like I don't have it you see me you're like oh I love that guy yeah. Bradley you're like I love him but is he gonna kill me yeah <laughs> is he gonna there's is he edge. gonna sleep with me yeah, is there he, is a, you know, there's exactly. this mystery yeah about there him. is there absolutely is. and that is priceless and also because I think the fact that he looks the way he looks it's like a beautiful woman where you have this idea and then she comes out and she's really raunchy or really funny then you're like oh and I think this sort of same pertains to someone like him where you have preconceived notions or or you could say, well, he's a pretty boy, but then you're like, well, wait a minute, he's a, he's really good in the Hangover movies. Like, yes. he's great. I worked for Todd Phillips for a short second, and mm -hmm. oh yeah, it's funny because I tried to watch The Joker last night. Not that I tried, I did watch it. it it's so dark. It's oh. so Ooh. Joaquin Phoenix I loved is incredible. It so much. Okay, so it's probably his best performance I've ever seen. Oh, by far. Okay. And he just, he's so in it. I yeah. mean, and that's what Bradley he's does so too. Bradley yes. is just, but what, what happens with Bradley is it's not a predictable performance. Even in, you know, um, The Hangover or whatever, the way yeah. he delivers a line. Like yep. I'll mm -hmm. have, and you too, as an actor, you watch and you go, oh, okay, I'm going to deliver that line. Whoa. Well, he, yeah, wow. Even a little inflection or the way he looks or something. Changes everything. Yeah. And it's just mystery. It's not predictable. So you are used to working with him and knowing him. When you're doing A Star is Born and he's playing this drunk, it's a darker character. He's so 
friggin' incredible in it. You know, you could tell you guys have a great rapport and, and friendship. It really comes through in those scenes. Had you seen him work this kind of darkness before? Because I feel like it was just over the top. It was incredible. Well, I mean, Silver Linings and other things like that, yeah. yes. And uh, But, you know, he was directing, so that's new. Well, how, yeah, how you did know, that affect, because he would I, hop in the car, like he's like, okay, Greg, we're going to do this. And we yeah, got so this is really interesting. So he, in the first scene, he comes out of the concert, right? He gets in the car, he wants booze. There's no booze. I apologize, whatever. Yeah. And then he goes, all right, let's just, when I get in the car, let's just talk. Let's just talk. And I'm like, okay. So if you listen again, watch it again, he says, how are the hey, kids? How's, how's Benny Reigns doing? And that, my son's name is Ben and his oh, nickname is Benny Reigns. Oh my God. And he goes, oh, and I say, oh, you know, he's scholarship. He's yeah. my, you know, he's playing so baseball. all real stuff. All real stuff. And what's nice. great about it is. love it. It so came across as natural. You have no idea. But also story wise, instantly you've got this driver. He's just a driver, driver. and he's got his shit together yes. Yes. and he's rich in yes. every way yes and then you've and got, you this... got the... it's so true the juxtaposition yeah. you've got this rock star in the back whose life is falling apart yeah and that's so great that he was like he's just so intuitive he knows what he wants and he doesn't by the way dictate okay like do line, like not this. necessarily line reading but he yeah. Do, great directors will do that. They'll just be conversational. Do you think it's because he's an actor too that For he understands it? Without question. And yeah. also worked with some of the greatest people ever. Um, and I've learned, I just, I worked with Al Pacino recently and I'm like, oh Ooh, my wow, God. Really? Yeah. I mean, is it coming out yet? What, is it coming? Oh Which yeah, no, no. Uh, Paterno. Uh, you know, in the Paterno. Oh, yes. okay, God. Yeah, yeah. I played oh, nice. his son. I, that's right. That was great. <laughs> right. That was Holy big, shit, big fat Greg one. Grunberg. That was <laughs> me. As Scott Paterno, if you're listening, I apologize, but we've talked about this. I actually play a real guy. Were you the son that defends him I'm trying to remember because I no, saw it a while back you're I'm the, the one son, that I'm the turns big, on him yeah who's like dad you have to, to you have to read the presentment what are you doing like and Scott is a great guy he's also uh, sort of the voice of the audience the logical voice yeah. and he's an attorney so he's like what the am I allowed to swear on this yeah, yeah, okay. whatever you want. yeah I'm like what the fuck <laughs> are you cool. doing you yeah. have to read this this guy molested kids this guy did a terrible thing and I was the only one who was really confronting it everyone else was um, hey, hey, la la really? la land, like just yeah. ignoring it now yeah. what was it like to work with uh, Pacino <laughs> he's my favorite actor ever me too and Scar really because yeah. Scarface is my favorite movie of all time which is since I'm 17 have I'm you seen The Irishman by the way of course Oh I loved it, it was so great. much. So did I. Everyone's like, ah, it's long. It was too long. I'm like, it long. was about one third of how it should. But not on Netflix. Have been. It was fine. I, yeah. I wish they would have gone almost eight episodes, like an hour long episodes. You can't get enough so Al Pacino. I wanted so much. Oh, and the two and of them Niro, oh, sitting on the bed in their jammies, yeah. facing each other, so great. having a scene. I'm like, that's what? gonna be you and Bradley in like yeah. thirty years. Oh, it'll be a love scene for sure. Wait, yeah, you have exactly. to tell when we went to go, because you are obsessed with Al Pacino, when we went to go see that play, I think it was... Um, Salome. 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 And who played that? That was, that was a, Jessica Chastain. She was Salome. And we were basically seen front row for kind of a table reading of it. What? Yeah, and then yes. uh, Al's people came over and they said, would you like, Al would like to meet you afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> uh, you know that whole thing like don't ever meet your heroes and yeah. so I remember when I was with my ex at the time he's like we're going backstage I'm like I have nothing to say to Al Pacino and I never went back yeah I just I, I'm like what am I gonna go back. I go back I didn't I, I get really freaked now, out I have like anxiety did you love the play yeah okay be, um, so, so it wasn't like what am I gonna did. say no I'm being honest so. was it yeah. it was slow did was... we not because it was sort of a table read it was very interesting oh. Jessica was fully committed mm -hmm. oh yeah mm-hmm he was doing a table read a little bit, except for when he said, Salome! Salome! Yeah, they was a little over the top. <laughs> but right. I was like, it's fucking Al Pacino. It's yeah. uh, it Tony Montana. What? Yes. Like, people will not watch Scarface with me because I know every line and it's so irritating. Yeah. So nobody, it's like <laughs> it's not one fun. Of the, it's one of the best movies. It's one of those Period. movies that, Untouchables, there's certain yeah. movies where yeah. if I come in the middle of it, you, 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 cancel heat, the plans, yeah. <laughs> call my mom, tell her we're not going to dinner. I mean, I will watch that movie. I have to and my son Sam one of my my boys they all love movies and stuff but Sam in particular he's just locked in like a in. cinephile he yeah. loves it he yeah. just loves it what and did that, he think when his name was mentioned in the movie like did he freak out they were yeah. pretty excited and That's then of so course cool. you know Jake's like what about me what about me yeah <laughs> thanks a lot Bradley Cooper you're like I couldn't give that thanks, much Dad. backstory right. come on <laughs> but it's okay I have a graphic novel and in the graphic novel I named the other two boys not Sam so <laughs> oh, good. in okay. volume three, Sam will be a bad guy. I feel like you I'll do everything because your voice yeah. is, I was actually a voice in Scarface. Uh, the, the, what? yeah, the I'm a voice game. in the video game because Al handpicked everybody. And of course, you know who else is in it? It's like yeah. Pretty oh Frank, God. 
you know, uh, Manny's in it, uh, Stephen Bauer. Everybody's in it except for Al because Al, his voice, he felt like it wasn't as much Tony Montana. So Al's driver in real life does a great Tony. So he's the voice. Of, Are you kidding me? That great. Wait, <laughs> he stuff. plays Tony in the movie yet didn't think he was Tony <laughs> enough. Yeah, he felt like his vocal cords didn't sound the same as Tony so what did he leave a message for himself going, hey, listen, uh, <laughs> we're going younger. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, like, what are you talking about? It was his decision and he yeah. didn't think. Yeah. That's, so he I'll tell you a funny. I'll, okay. So I love him. So we're all sitting around the table. It's a family, family scene. You know, we're supposed to. So we had a um, like a uh, kind of chemistry thing. We sat around and we read through the script. I had no idea that we were reading at essentially 100%. Like, I don't know who you wouldn't have chemistry with. You've got that personality, uh, right? So you probably fi fix in with everybody. But yeah. in that movie, I had to, I, had, I yeah. was driving the scenes. Yeah. I was like, fuck you, dad, what the yeah. fuck? And it's like, oh, it's Al Pacino. It's Al Pacino. <laughs> fuck you, Al Pacino. Yeah. So like, <laughs> there's this level of respect. I mean, it's Paterno. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Paterno was like this God figure, God figure. in Pennsylvania. So yeah. anyway, so we had that. So it was okay. But then breaking through going, no, this is bullshit. What are you guys? Yeah. So, Anyway, very quickly, wow. he respected me that going there. you went there, after him, yeah. Which was great. But then yeah. on set, he had, he did he played this trick where he had a uh, he had his um, iPhone and he was listening to an actual interview that Paterno did. Oh. So he would then do the other side of it. So he would listen to Paterno and then answer the same sort of voice. What are you talking? Hey, what are you? I don't understand. <laughs> and this is we're rolling right wow. and it's barry levinson directing oh my god so i'm like Jeez. you know literally i'm like i need a diaper yeah right I would too. i'm gonna be shitting all day in my pants <laughs> and so and i'm wearing a big fat suit and the whole thing it was so great it was like a dream unbelievable and then he would do this thing where they'd be rolling the camera he'd be like yeah well, i don't know and then he'd take it off and hand it to his assistant and then he'd, then he'd go all right so you know scott what do you think he would stay in voice so then we cut and I, and I said, this is bullshit. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, you're fucking Al Pacino, man. Like, that's not how you're, you're cheating. Like, I, thought, I thought you nailed this. He's like, I gotta get it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta make it happen, whatever. And he's just the greatest. I mean, oh so God. generous, so great. And then one moment, which was amazing, which is your same moment where somebody says, you know, Al Pacino yeah. says, Al would like to meet you was um, we're doing the scene and he went up on his lines and because because I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, like stand up and do this whole thing. And then he's like, I'm sorry, Barry, I'm sorry. It's just Greg was just incredible there. He just <laughs> totally, I just, and I was like, are we rolling? Can I <laughs> Somebody get has evidence of this, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to tweet that. Oh my yeah. God. I just want to tweet that. That's crazy. Incredible. Like Affirmation. Those, yes. Right? Like just, okay. And also, and wow. you've experienced this, I'm sure all of you, when you meet these people, you and it all started by the way getting back to stars born is i was joel silver's driver back in the day i did I was not 19. know what yeah, are you I, kidding me i was 19 and i needed a job and my brother knew somebody who knew joel and oh my god he was looking for a driver and i met him and he's like you know i don't want any but joel silver for people to know yeah. a oh, huge god. movie producer, producer. matrix and, and all mm -hmm. these movies anyway he said i i want somebody who just wants to be a driver which is like in LA. <laughs> Good nobody. Luck. Good yeah, luck with nobody. that. I'm looking for someone to be a waiter. Only a waiter. <laughs> in LA. Yeah. No aspirations for being in the show business. <laughs> Doesn't like, exist. About. So I lied and said, yeah, okay. And You're like, that's all my dreams. That's all I want to do. Yeah. I would be like Ronnie the limo driver. I don't need to be anything else. <laughs> U-turns are my life. <laughs> that's the ultimate. And he uh, hired me and I worked for him. And I learned really quickly that all these people, Stallone and, you know, Schwarzenegger and all these people, they're just people. Yeah. You know? and that kind of, of makes course. you it, it for me at it least humanizes everything yeah, and, right? and says i can get there too yeah it's a great message you were born in la where were you yeah. raised uh i was raised right at san diego freeway in mohon like right by the fire station up there oh, yeah, calmiva yeah. and havenhurst up there so random. Like called you're... bel air knolls but it's not anywhere <laughs> near bel air, bel -Air. Bel -Air. Yeah. <laughs> so i have a funny story about uh, getting back to pacino and de niro i was in their first movie they ever did together called heat and oh, they great used movie. Right. okay oh. so they're like they want to use your weather cast and i remember i was in this bright pink like tight dress i was on the 10 o'clock news and i did the whole forecast and in the movie, because I was so excited, I told everybody, I'm like, I'm in a freaking movie with Al Pacino. I was yeah. like, you know, I just moved here. I was maybe 27 and 26. So they put me in the scene. She's already making herself younger in the story. Yeah, right? For no, I, was, I was 27. Yeah, was, I was telling people I was 24. I was 26. Anyway. I was 25. Yeah, I was probably 25. You were playing 24. You were playing 24. Yeah, did they, totally. you actually shot for the movie. 
I shot a faux weather cast. Okay. So now the scene comes on. I'm like, I hear my voice. I'm like, oh my God, here's my scene. It was a scene where Al rips the TV out of the... So it's literally... I had just, you see a trail of pink leave the screen and then you see the five day forecast come up and he just goes, oh, blah, 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 and he rips it out of the wall. And I was like, but Al, <laughs> that was my big scene. So yeah. you drove him crazy enough. He tore to rip it out. Yeah. Nobody saw me. Couldn't you waited for the five yeah, day? Son of a bitch. Oh my God. That's big so asshole. funny. But you know what? It's funny that it was their first movie together because I had thought, you know, but there, weren't they in other movies? Yeah, but they never had scenes together. And yeah. this was like, I think the first movie. Anyway, so getting back to, now you see them in three and a half hours worth of The Irishman. I'm like you, I I, lo- I saw it twice. I've seen seven hours of The Irishman. That's, <laughs> like, that's a little crazy. That's a little So nuts. good though. I mean, <laughs> so, good. so good. And and uh, Joe Pesci, to oh see Joe God. Pesci in- I loved it. In the, the boss role, yeah. I mean, essentially. Yes. So great. incredible. And, and he's it. so intimidating. Oh, my God. And Sebastian Maniscalco, who I'm he's amazing. such a fan of as a comedian and an actor. I mean, he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's great. Terrific. Yeah. And who else? Oh, my God. Ray Romano. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought Ray Romano? He did Ma- great. Really he great. He is incredible Ugh. in it. I to see the you point in those. where yeah. nominations should happen for him. Because he was, was kind great. of unexpected. Yeah. He was really, really, he's really He's holding good. his own completely. Yeah. But don't you, would you love, I mean, I could see you as doing a role in an ensemble like that. I mean, totally. Could, I got to say, like, when I'm up and wait and stuff, people, people coming like up to me all the time. You're going, Italian. Yeah, but people coming up going, you were so good in Sopranos. And I'm oh, like, no, oh, God, shut like, up. Okay, no. well, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just, Just take credit. Shows. Just take it. I was it. 12, but I appreciate it. I mean, I wasn't 12. <laughs> I hope you were young enough. It's so funny. And then also people like, they're like, Mr. Favreau, can I get a... Oh my God, John, John. He's brilliant. And who I just saw the other night at the I, Star Wars premiere. so brilliant. Yes, I was just at the Star Wars premiere, the premiere, the world premiere of The Rise of Skywalker. Okay, you, Unreal. getting back to JJ, you've known JJ as long as, longer than Bradley. You came up with JJ, longer right? Bradley, yeah, since we were five. We both oh, went wow. to Roscommon Road Elementary School. Shut up. Yeah. And we just immediately gravitated towards each other. And he was making movies back then. So we were nine. So he was like Steven Spielberg. Yes. Yes. And, and he, a great story. They, they just talked about it at the, at the premiere again. But JJ's nine. Matt Reeves, brilliant filmmaker uh, who's doing Batman and mm-hmm. stuff. Wow. Matt and, and me and the three of us and also a guy named Mark Sanderson. And I wasn't the filmmaker. I was the actor. So I would be in all oh of those God. little movies that That's they made, fake so commercials and, and little things. And we were on Kimmel. And he shows this little one called the attic where it was like, I didn't know we had an attic. These kids. Oh, that's like, what are those so stairs? Cool. And, and you, you were upstairs. acting in it? Yeah. And I'm the little kid in it. <laughs> oh, that's so and then great. my mom, you go to the door and the door opens. And my mom is like, what's going on? We were out of town. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and I still to this day, my mom's like, you know, it's that's just so hysterical. funny. How old were you in it? Nine? Nine or 10. So Who we were making. The, all these kids would grow up to be in this bit. Well, you, I mean, uh, it's it, to me, you know, the fact that Steven Spielberg was making these movies at nine. Yeah. And then he goes mm-hmm. on to have this uh, unbelievable. Career. Ready for this? This yeah. is crazy. So JJ and Matt and Mark had recognized on this public access show that this guy named Gerard Ravel did, which was about young filmmakers, how they were discovered. I don't know, but they found them and they showed their, it was maybe a competition that they did for young filmmakers. Anyway, Kathy Kennedy's working for Spielberg with Spielberg at the time. Oh my God. And Steven has all of the Steven. Anyway, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. He dropped something. Thank you. Nice. Let me get that. Um, <laughs> he has all of these old 16 millimeter film, you know, and it's all beat up from when he made them as oh a kid. Oh, my God. He didn't want any professional services to uh, stitch them together and fix them. He wanted kids that are working on movies to do it. So Kathy Kenny calls oh JJ up God. and says, I work with uh, Steven Spielberg. He has these, uh, well, they want you to fix them. Cut to what? Matt and JJ in JJ's bedroom. Shut up. And I'm there having nothing to do because I don't know how to splice. I don't know. How to, <laughs> You're looking go, at this, these reels yes. that were Steven Spielberg. Yes. And these, this is when, when he was a kid, he's making these bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to see these movies oh at like 13. I think we were 13. And you're sitting there <gasps> with his personal stuff. Yeah. Going just a frame. And you're going to throw it away anyway. Yeah, give it to me. They're like, nope. And every single piece they put into an envelope that they couldn't, you know, stitch oh together. Oh my God. And then they fixed it all. And two nights ago, the premiere on stage, it was Bob Iger and Kathy Kennedy and JJ. Oh my and God. And she says, I called up JJ when he was a oh, kid. Oh, she told the story. Yeah. And Spielberg was there. And it was just. <gasps> Unbelievable. Talk about full circle. Oh my God. That is un. That's. Uh, it's mind boggling. And, and me and sitting there going, without Snap Wexley, without Greg Grunberg, JJ is nothing. I mean, really. <laughs> that's true. You think about it. it. Obviously. All to you. <laughs> Obviously. Well, you know, I've got an interesting Steven Spielberg story. He 
was on the set. They were all good friends. De Palma, you know, they all kind of came up as directors together. And he was on set and De Palma was making Scarface. And he said to him, I've got an idea for when the Colombians are coming in at the end when Tony's all coked up and he's got the gun. And he goes, why don't you put the camera at, because I've seen every fucking documentary on Scarface. Yeah, yeah. Put the camera on the floor and just show the feet of the Colombians coming in. Oh, and we yeah. don't know. And that, that's like a pivotal, really oh, cool. It's iconic. And that, iconic. That Im- image. Yeah. And that was Steven Spielberg's idea. He was just visiting the set because they're all buddies. So last night or two nights ago, that's what JJ said. He said, I want to thank Steven for what he did for this movie. And not, he wasn't talking about influence. It's one of those things where, you know, JJ will have screening after screening after screening or show sections of the movie and he, there's a few people he can count on that he can turn to. And of one course. of them is Jesus. the most brilliant filmmaker of Ever. all time. Yeah. And then other people like me and his wife, Katie, who's, you know, she's the CEO of Bad Robot. She, but she's brilliant, but she's also s- incredibly creative. So when you're at that level, you really just want honest feedback. Yeah. yeah. And people sometimes like, you're maybe more, f- you know, filmic or, or uh, educated in film than I am, but th- like I'll watch something. I won't know how, exactly how to articulate it in film terms. I mean, yeah. I, I do make my own movies too, but at that level, I'm oh, just it's like telling you. It's an awe. I'm in awe. And I'm just kind of giving a feeling like, I don't know, there's something about those two scenes that didn't work, whatever. And they can interpret that and yeah. go, okay. And fix it. This is it. Yeah. And, and he they wants speak to hear a different the brutal language. honesty. You yeah. don't want to hear, oh, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's the greatest. However, two nights ago, sitting at that premiere, it's the greatest. I was. I can only imagine. Oh. So this is now what number Star Wars for Nine. you? Nine. Oh, for me, second. Okay. I can't believe I say that. I mean, is that so kind awesome. of crazy to be part of crazy. this incredible? I mean, and JJ pe- gets the call and says to me, "I the I, first I, one, the first one, the Force yeah. Awakens," and I said, "Oh my God, dude, I mean, this, you're perfect for this. You're a huge fan of this franchise." Um, he wasn't as much of a fan of uh, it's just as far as like not being his consumed yeah. by it as in Star Trek, but he brought that franchise yeah. back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mission Impossible. He brought yeah. back like all these great things. Brilliant. I said, Oh my God, I can't wait. Like I got excited as a fan. I'm like excited to see what you're going to do. And then the force awakens happens. He tells me, he's like, I have something for you. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh I my get to God. London. I fly to London. Oh my knowing, God. Knowing that I'm in the movie. Like it's like so it's secret. Enough of, uh, done. Like but it's not amazing. knowing what I'm going to do. Right. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. It was like on Lost. He he's like, come you. to Hawaii. Uh, when you, when you land, well, I'll, I'll tell you what you're doing when oh you get God. there. And I'm, I end up being the pilot and getting killed. It's crazy. <laughs> being pilot and both. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> thanks dude. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, I, you got 20 seconds, 20 seconds on the show. But it's memorable. Yeah. It's, it's the most, if I didn't crash yep. the plane. You would have no loss. Oh my God. It's all your fault. Yeah. The show would have been called hover there. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> circle the airport um and so so i get to london i'm walking down these stairs to this restaurant chinese restaurant everybody's there i don't recognize a lot of these people because they haven't done much yeah um, but yeah but that's true at the time at the time yeah and so jj looks up and he goes there he is snap wexley and I, that's all i needed to hear i'm like i don't doesn't sound like a creature <laughs> kind of does like maybe <laughs> am i like a, a pea pod snap wexley it's the greatest Great, greatest. And then I, they fit me for a pilot outfit, and I'm in the you Force have Awakens. It. You're like, I'm not Jabba the Huts, like <laughs> Long Lost Son. Exactly. No, that's all good then. Yeah. yeah. Just give me Spanx. <laughs> I'm put good me to in, go. Put me in that orange <laughs> jumpsuit, and I'm ready to go. So did you know that you would be asked back to this particular, like, when did you get the call for this? No, I this mean, new one? So, so The Last Jedi happens, and um, they decide, the director uh, decides he doesn't want to bring back any of the pilots, I guess, creatively, whatever. It didn't match with the story. And it was it was not J.J. who directed that one. They just No, over. no. Yeah. And so, um, but, you know, that happens, whatever. Yep. I was in a Star Wars movie. Yeah, I'm fine. Done. You know? Good. And I loved Last Jedi. Like, I really thought yeah, it, was it was a great ride. It was great. It was a beautiful movie. Incredible. So, but I heard a lot of backlash. I, I do Comic-Cons all over the world, and these guys, everybody's like, what happened? You and Jess, and like, they all, they know all of our oh, names. Oh, they know. Where was Snap? Every, Where yeah. was Snap? Where was yeah. Snap? I need more Snap, actually. And um, <laughs> you kind of do, in those movies, you really do want to see those, you know, even a droid. Characters, you know, yep. want to see a droid. They you want to see that. everything. Yeah, they and it do. makes it familiar again and whatever. So I was like, well, whatever. And then uh, this happens. JJ goes, I got good news. I got better news. I'm oh like, my what's God. the good news? He oh goes, my God. I'm doing episode nine. I just, I decided. And there was, you know, you heard rumors of it on a whole thing. And he decided to do it. Oh, and then he geez. goes, and the better news is Snap's back. And I was like, yeah! Snap back! Snap How back. exciting, too, for, I mean, you've been with your wife and you've got three boys and you've been married for a long time it's fun to come home and tell them about certain projects i imagine having three boys and then you're in Ugh. star wars i don't know how deep their affection is for it but Huge. holy shit 
And their and godfather is the <laughs> writer, director, producer. I mean, JJ's the godfather of oh all my kids. So it's oh like, my God. you know, th that's just nuts. I mean, that's nuts. insanity. Yeah. And, and t by the way, tomorrow is my anniversary. When oh, how many years? years? Only 27. <gasps> That's all. Dude, in and you're Hollywood? my age. I, I see you're born in 66 like oh, yeah. me. Yeah. And you're born in 66? Yeah, you thought 76. I know. Oh, it's obvious. I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh my God. Seriously, dude. dude yeah, we're the same age. I, I think you might be a little, I'm September. But um, I'm a lot older than I'm you. I'm amazed at the fact you that amazing. you've been married because I've been married twice. I can't get it right. What the fuck? How do you do it? Did you guys meet in college you did it or right. high I school? I met your son. You yeah, did it right. Yeah, the, thank God I've got those two because. Every there is while, no wrong way. I know, but I see people that have been together for almost 30 years and I'm like, what is the secret? Like, how do you, what, uh, it's you know, gotta be a formula. Is it just luck too? And a lot of boning, just, a <laughs> just so much sex. Well, it's crazy. That, that's why. That is there why. You, go. you just um, answered my question. You know, what, what's interesting is, I mean, I can look back now and I wouldn't wish this on anybody, but when you go through the stuff that we have gone through, it breaks people up yep. or it brings people together. Our oldest son has epilepsy. He's had two brain surgeries oh, and he's doing great. He's kicking ass. He works at Bad Robot. He's doing great. Oh, that's amazing. Can yeah. I ask you how old he was? I want to know from when you and your right. wife discovered that yeah. there was an issue because I had a dog that had seizures and I was like, what's happening? I don't understand. I cannot yeah. imagine when it's your child, which is your heart is out there with, walking around with arms and legs. <sighs> yeah. And that will tear people apart. So how, how yeah. did you even know? And we raised our son like a dog, which is interesting. <laughs> I mean, treated him just like a dog. He poos and pees outside. Put him in, put him in a cage. We're cage training. Exactly. Boys can and be we like that. Throw yeah, him boys. some snacks exactly. every once in a while. Um, so Jake was seven and oh uh, he's our oldest. And he's just a, you know, looking back, everybody's like, oh, whatever. He, he was... Uh, really good at sports, still is. He's athletic, but um, like really good. And then the teachers are like, oh, he's really smart. He's going to be on the gate program or whatever they call it, you know, yeah. the advance. Whatever. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I just want a healthy child. And, yes. and so seven years old. And then all of a sudden, when he looked out the car window, okay, if you look at somebody's eyes, yeah. when they're watching things move go by, by yeah. the eyes go boom, boom, boom. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm moving my fingers back and forth and back yeah. and forth. It's like they darting and finding things. It's yeah. really interesting when you watch somebody's eyes like that. That repetitive sort of motion, I think is what caused, he would do these staring spells. We didn't know what they were called. We knew nothing about epilepsy, nothing about seizures in our family or anything. And seizure to me was always, you know, a grand mall seizure. Which, yeah. On the ground. On so the that's ground. what you think, yeah. right. That's all you think of. So he would be in the car and I'd be like, so Jake, uh, you excited? We're going to go see this movie. And it'll just be quiet. And he's looking out the window and I go, Jake, did you hear me? Jake. And he'd be like, what? And I said, dude, we're going to see a movie. Yeah, I'm really excited. Totally normal. But hmm. we noticed that those little moments happened and they're called Pettit Mall or Pettit Mall seizures oh, and they're staring spells. So it's, it's like an editor takes that five to 10 seconds out of your life. So to Jake, oh he gosh. blinked and I'm talking about something else. And he's yeah. like, what? Oh. And then oh, that's a trip. Really a, a trip. And we heard from a teacher, you know, I don't know, he's sort of, you know, dazing out or whatever. And you hear that when you don't know anything about seizures and you, like, you start reprimanding on? your child. You're yes. like, pay attention, dude. When somebody talks to you, you have to pay attention. Stay engaged, like don't drift, whatever. Yeah. And we would say, so at our seven year checkup, you know, the annual yep. whatever for the, uh, we went to uh, our, incredible doctor at the Bruckner and we were like hey and he says everything any concerns and I said well there is this thing and he goes Jake do me a favor put your head down breathe 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 and he made him hyperventilate and Jake then dozed into this <gasps> sort of oh seizure where his oh. head was bobbing a little bit and we are terrified terrified and he says look I'm not a neurologist I don't know anything oh you know uh, but I think this might be epilepsy that's a that's a seizure unbelievable what a great oh, doctor you, great doctor you must all the whole shock, family practice yeah. oh in my absolute God. shock and but we are the type of people my wife too that we were like get on it let's get on it let's Good. get an answer let's fix this yeah so we wow. tried to get we went to a neurologist who over medicated didn't really know mm -hmm. you know epilepsy is a really specialized thing there's something called an epileptologist, which people don't even realize is a thing. No, no. Nope. Unless you're in the that. epilepsy world. That's a neurologist specializes in epilepsy. Then you need a pediatric epileptologist. Holy Because shit. there's so many medications and so many things in the pipeline, certain things work. Yes. And by the way, you need a pharmacologist who's also a pediatric oh epileptologist so that they really know We're, what's on the cutting edge. Right. Um, Boy, and do they all have to work together to make sure? Or do, can they, you know... 
Because you don't want to over-medicate, like you said, and yeah. you got to find that perfect solution for him. Yeah. Did that take a while to figure out what was going to be... Like when you say over medicate did he like doze off? Was he like sort of lethargic? He or what gained was... weight. He yeah. had hair growing in the back of his neck. Oh, like we're oh, like, what's baby. going on? And his seizures. He's, he's what's called uh, difficult to treat. He's uh, drug resistant. So oh. the first medication... For 75% of patients, first medication, you're fine. Take that med, then you can titrate it down and see maybe you outgrow it or whatever. Jake wasn't that. So Jake, we were chasing. So we were constantly like, oh, let's add this medication. This, And you do these overnight stays at the doctor. They do EEGs. They, they figure it out. And if you're with a great, you know, physician, um, by the way, so UCLA was the place we went. And uh. UCLA is... Unfortunately, there's 3 million plus people in the oh United God. States that have epilepsy. Oh my God. It's diagnosed. The, yeah, diagnosed. A lot of people that, they, oh, Don't it's even, a. Because what you problem, described, but, I bet a lot of people are undiagnosed and are unaware. Oh my yeah. God. There are people in our lives that, that we've come across. One was a teacher of Jake's. She called us up years later. I'm cutting ahead, but she calls us up years later and she said, Hey, by the way, I, I have epilepsy. I never knew it. And I oh said, my God. What? And she goes, Yeah, you remember, remember that car accident I got into? where it was just me in a tree. Oh remember God. I bumped that per I told you I bumped that car in front of me. Uh, do you remember I, like, oh, oh she, wow. and, and when she, she was on a blind date and it was going really well and she was nervous and she had wine and she, maybe she, I think she took something as a, to, to relax before mm. she went on the date or whatever. And that all caught, and she wakes up on the floor of the restaurant. Oh my gosh. What a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that guy left her. Thanks a lot. Yeah, what an nice. asshole. I thought you were like, and they got married. Yeah, right. <laughs> <I know. laughs> that prick, he leaves what him out of here. I can't son of a this. bitch. But um, anyway, so we went through what I call the epilepsy car wash with this. You know, we've tried everything. He had brain surgery uh, How old Chicago. was he when he had his first brain? Oh my God. Uh, 12. That was one that we had to make a decision. He was having, oh my gosh. and I like I can't Ellen, even I've, I've been on these shows and I talk yeah. about this and everyone's like, oh my God. And they lead with it. They're like, hey, your son has had thousands of seizures. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, like a, a pop, that could be a seizure. Yeah. A little staring spell, that's a seizure. You know, he could, he's had hundreds a day. You're so right about, I had a preconceived notion that a seizure was like you, you get on the floor and you, mm -hmm. you your, your eyes roll back or maybe you have, you froth a little bit. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I had no By clue way, that you that could do that does small. happen. But what happens to, at the beginning of a seizure is, or a brain aneurysm or something like that. Like if you're talking to somebody, if you're talking to somebody, if you're talking to someone and they yeah. repeat themselves, you're yeah. like, that's weird. Yeah. Get ready because they either just had an aneurysm, there are, something's going on with their brain, or if they're staring at you and they're not speaking, grab them because the seizure is not going to hurt them. It's Falling. the fall. Yes. It's the trauma to the head. Mm. So grab them. I talk about it in, in school. I say, you know, these kids are all about free hugs. You know, yeah. they talk about free hugs. I'm like, this kid needs a free hug. If you see something strange wow. and just take him down, put him on his side never stick anything in, in their anyone's mouth. mouth that's having a seizure ever. ever. They can't choke on their tongue. It's a okay. myth. Oh, tonic. So I didn't even know that. So we don't use the term grand mal. Okay. okay. Grand mal translates to the big evil. It's saying this person's possessed. That's oh. the way it comes from the big evil. Grand. Oh, is that mal. what it means? Yeah. The oh. big, the big bad. I thought you meant it wasn't politically correct. It just means it the isn't big politically correct because it because oh. it translates to that. Got so. it. You and your wife, you're in Chicago. Your son is 12. He's getting ready for brain surgery. I I'm already wanting to cry. I can't even imagine. Oh, darkest moment of my life. <sighs> and this is what goes back to your earlier question: is, you know, and we're alone. I mean, we don't have any family in Chicago, yeah. and we're not going to oh be like, God, hey, come out scary. and be with us. I mean, we you just yeah. deal with it. You yeah. you deal with it, and we all have stuff. You know, it's yeah. like, but wheeling him in. Um, we had a great, uh, we do this epilepsy telethon every year and, uh, John Andrasek, do you know John, no. uh, from five for fighting? Oh, I know. Yeah. No five for fighting. Yeah. So John is five for fighting. There's okay. no, there's no, there's no band. It's okay. like, that's his stage name on stage. He's an incredible, brilliant musician. So band from TV, my band, we're playing a gig again. I'm bouncing all over the place, but this is a great story. And we're playing a gig. We're at in Hollywood and, um, so J I'm going to cry Jake, uh, before he got wheeled into surgery, Superman was his really a great song for him because it's like, you know, uh, I, I don't oh. want to be a Superman. I'm not a Superman. I'm just doing what, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm having seizures. How is a parent? You know, it's like, how is a parent? How do you do it? Oh my God. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> I do it. My you wife no is, choice. Yeah. We lean on each other and that's it. And so anyway, I, I blasted that music as he was being wheeled into surgery. 
because I wanted him to hear that. I, I wanted that to be the last Jeez. thing. And I'm yelling, don't take his sense of humor. I'm like trying to be funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's, as we're wheeling oh him God. in, you just hear, you know, uh, Superman, like that song. Oh. Cut to our band playing uh, in uh, Hollywood. And we're playing with Five for Fighting. Oh, God. So we're that's at, so re- we're at uh, rehearsal and uh, sound check. And I meet um, all the great, all the guys in the band. Randy, you know, mm-hmm. is the drummer, and 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 John. And I tell him the story, and he goes, "Where's your son?" I say, "He's at home." He goes, "Bring him tonight. I want to put him on the piano oh, bench with me. Oh. I want to sing the song to him." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I was like, "Oh my god, Are, really?" And he oh goes, "Yeah, of course. The song means that much to you. <laughs> yes, bring him tonight." So I go home. <laughs> I race home, right? And I'm getting ready. I take a shower. I go get Jake ready. Jake, get ready. He's like, "What's good?" I go, "Trust me, just get ready." How old was Jake at this time? How long had passed, do you think? Uh, I think it was like 14. Okay, so it was only a couple years later. Yeah, only a couple years later. And he's super excited. And I go, just... You just get ready, whatever. So and you didn't tell him. Ex- I didn't what tell him. I said, I want on. you to come to the I mean, gig to get tonight. A Fourteen-year-old excited about anything. <laughs> yeah. You're halfway there. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, Dad, you don't play music. I like. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like <laughs> if I hear my Dad, Sharona again, do yeah. I have to go see Star Wars because you're in it, Dad? <laughs> Dad, <laughs> Dad. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I make him call me Snap Wexley, but anyway. <laughs> so he uh, he gets ready, and right as we're about to leave, he has a huge seizure because he's so excited. He doesn't know what's happening, but he's. Just a normal kid, but he had a huge seizure, and I couldn't bring him. And it was oh my God, so I'm devastating. Dying. I'm dying. Like you cannot believe. Cut, I, t- cut to uh, about a month ago. We do our telethon every year. Yeah, you guys are amazing. It, it was it was awesome. We do a four hour live event at my building. You've been, stream you've been it all doing over the it place. forever too. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah. And this time, Fire for Fighting's playing, and John says, "Get Jake over here." And I'm like, what? And so John's playing. I have video of it. I'll show you. Oh, that's John's brilliant. John's playing Superman. And I pan over and Jake is watching. And Jake's <laughs> oh, just, and it was just like, and oh, Jake's 23. Finally, He's finally. like, yeah, exactly. It comes total full, full circle. That's crazy. Yeah. He's, He's such a generous guy, John. And uh, oh, that's Randy beautiful. Cook, who's the drummer for Smash Mouth and Five for Fighting. He's a really good friend. And these guys have become friends of mine and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it's a b- beautiful story. So you're great. getting the word out. Let's talk about your work with your foundation. Tell me about your foundation. Uh, it's called talkaboutit.org. And it is uh, the main goal is to raise money, awareness, and remove the stigma associated with epilepsy and seizures. Well, when did you start it? Yeah. So I realized very quickly that there's such a stigma attached. People don't or know. You don't know. I mean, grandma, yeah, just ignorant. I didn't, but why people would ever know that? Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have Michael J. Fox behind the cause. You don't have Stand Up for Cancer's guy. I mean, yep. the, it, you need it. We need yeah. a voice. We need a face. You yeah. know, and and did, so, were you looking and there was nobody? Like, yeah, I like, was. That's so interesting. I was like, how do I raise money? And we did this thing for UCLA where I said, okay, um, we're going to have an event. And we, 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 all these parents of kids with epilepsy, which is so hard to, it's just hard to raise kids with epilepsy. It's hard to raise kids. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Let alone a kid who could at some point at school have a, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I went to school and he's laying in a pool of blood because he's, oh. he had he a fell? seizure. Yeah. And it's like, oh, heart, your heart breaks. Oh my God. It's the worst. And teachers don't want to touch him because oh. God forbid he yeah. breaks his neck. Exactly. I'm like, he cracked his head. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's touch fix, him. Yeah. But anyway, um, so, oh. so I, I'm doing this event. We raised $200,000 for oh the event. Oh my God. And the event cost us 190000 to put on. I'm oh like, God. what are we doing? And we all hate each other at the oh end of the event. God. So I'm like, we're doing this wrong. Yeah. Cut to, I do a lot of cut twos. I, I like, love that. Uh, I know the business. That's the director. I wonder. I, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, well, uh, some people say like fast forward to, but yeah, cut fast two. Forward to. I like do easy. a lot of rewind. Rewind. Um, <laughs> I, I play the drums and I get asked uh, to play at the House of Blues one song. I'm on Felicity. And it was like, we played Surrender by Cheap, Cheap Trick, right? And on the carpet, there was like Macy Gray and all these people. And I was like getting a lot of attention. People were like, aren't you nervous? Oh my God, Phil Lesh from the Grateful Dead is going to be in the band. You're playing in front of all these people and playing with them. Oh my God. And I'm like, no, it's one song. I've played it a hundred thousand times. I think I can get it. And uh, Mandy Foreman singing and Rob Benedict, they were on the show together. And so we did it. And I thought in the back of my mind, I'm like, wow, that was a lot of attention. Like that's Good. Yeah. That we could really raise some money from. Ah, very good. So then TV Guide is having their post Emmy party. And somehow, somebody at TV Guide says, we're planning this event, this, this party, and I know you have this TV band. Oh, my God. I did not. I did not have a TV nice. band. Nice. I had okay. just I had just been on House, and, and Hugh and I had jammed a little bit. Hugh Laurie. Oh, that's a, right. He's a big, he loves He music. and I founded this band found, together. Yeah. James Denton asked oh, me Oh, that's to, right, from Housewives. I mean, he was yeah. original, too. Yeah. Yeah. So he, Bob Guinea, who is the best guy on the yeah. planet and a great musician. I mean, Bob's a great musician. Scott Grimes. 
Yeah. Incredible musician. Adrian Pazdar, Jesse Spencer. Like these all, all these guys, there's so many people that are musicians and you people don't, don't realize know. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you wouldn't a, know. Adrian was married to Natalie Maines, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. They were married mm-hmm. for a long time. But Adrian is a really talented musician. I said, I would never know. But yeah, you wouldn't so, know that because of her. Until the so, band. So, yeah. so we're doing this, we're doing this a thing. We're going to have a couple other up and coming musicians. Like really cool. We'd love you to be the band. You know, they're going to oh open for you. They didn't tell me who it was. Wait till you hear who it was. It's crazy. <laughs> and so we'd like you to do it. So I'm like, okay. And like I said, yeah, I have a band. Uh, what's the name of the band? I go, I'll get back to you. I said, what's the offer? I said, we all have charities for charity band. What's the offer? They're like, well, we'll give you $50,000. I was like, <gasps> no, click. Uh, like the oh, balls on me. God. The balls on me. I was like, uh, call my buddy, Brad Savage, who is my producing partner and, and he's the bass player in the band. And, and I go, Brad, I just turned out an offer. For, he's like, what? First of all, we don't have a band. <laughs> and I said, we can put it together. He goes, what? So, so she calls me back. She goes, why'd you hang up on me? I go, I got seven people in this band, 50 grand. We all have to give to charities. She's like, all right, 100,000. And I said, no. no. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I keep thinking the of you. And, I, and by the way, I'm shooting a movie. I mean, you lost and 10 does, grand. You uh, mainly made 10 grand on the last game. Exactly. And he, by the way, he doesn't have a band. So I don't he's have negotiating a band. for really. So I yeah. said, I go, look, she goes, I'm going into a meeting right now. I just need to know. I was like, well, see how much money you can get and then call me back. I mean, I don't, it's all going to charity. I'm just going to tell you, send 10,000 to cancer, send 10,000 to epilepsy, send 10,000. Yeah. So. It's all right off for, yeah. for, for TV, for TV guy. guy. Come on, you guys have Ooh. the money. Yeah. So she goes, okay, I'll call you back. Meantime, I get You're on like, the phone. You're like, I got to get a band Hugh. together. Yeah, Jesse. <laughs> I call everybody. Everybody's in. Everybody's oh, in. Oh my gosh, fantastic. let's do this. Let's do this. So then she calls me back. She goes, all right, I got $175,000. I was like, done. We're in. Let's go. <laughs> could you imagine? You, <sighs> you could have said yes to 50 and there was 175 available. This yeah. is incredible. Master negotiator. So that was but the beginning for you. That was the beginning. And then, as... and then, of course, we get there and they're like, um, so there's a guy, uh, this guy, Kanye West, he's going to open for you. And I'm like, what? So Who? Kanye, oh, then up. Pink than us <laughs> like they they were nothing they were incredible musicians oh, that hadn't broken yet my god or they were just breaking just you know? breaking and uh did anyways, you know so, who kanye was at the time no and yeah. he blew the doors off that really place. Oh, you had to god. follow both of them yeah <laughs> they opened for us that's my story you know it's like so not true but that's it is crazy. They, they played and then we played but that began 12 years Six million dollars of charity oh we raised. Yeah, just gosh. crazy. That's insane. We have two songs that I sent you. Uh, one is called "Christmas Crime," which Beautiful. is an original. Uh, it's a holiday song. Um, you can pl- hopefully play a little sm- snippet Let's do of that. it. We will. And then, Insert here. Yeah, and then let yeah. people know where to find it. And then uh, the other is uh, "I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus." Classic. But we've done two songs for the house soundtrack that produced by David Foster. Oh wow! Oh, I mean, just to get much bigger than that. Yeah, the experiences we've played has been crazy everywhere. We played American I, Idol. If you remember, Terry Hatcher's. Saying Yes, that's right. That was our band. They were like, Terry Hatcher right. with band from TV. And I was like, oh! oh my God. And then now I have a new band because we're playing all the Comic Cons all over the world. And it's oh, called the Action so cool. Figures. Oh, God. That's and a great name. A lot of the same faces, but they have to have action figures. So this band oh. is not for charity. This band, some of the people opt to yeah. you know, put the, send but their money to charity. But it's for money. But it's for it's money. And it's and because uh, we've been asked to do this all over. I, I'll go to Japan and I'll sign you know, for a day. And then we play a concert that night and just, it's blows it. Huge. It's insane. Then I, we signed for two more days. I've only been to one comic con. It was in San Diego. And remember I was dating Orin at the time. He's the guy yep. who created the saw movies. And we went there for saw. I know. And it was, I, I just remember thinking these people are fucking crazy <laughs> and they're, they're going to keep all of my friends employed forever because yeah. they're so passionate. And I loved it. I was like, to the actors you're so lucky you're involved in either a horror genre or action Mm -hmm. or game or whatever the case sci-fi because they're so passionate and they're passionate about your characters so when you go it must be i feel like you wear so many hats you're acting you've got your podcast you've got the band i feel like you're a go-getter in many ways like you just face the challenges that are brought to you and you tackle like you said you and your wife are like how are we going to fix this are you like that with your career too i feel like you just there's nothing that you won't Tackle I think it's a I graphic mean, yeah. novel. What's your graphic novel too? So yeah. graphic novel is really cool. Graphic novel was an idea that, so my son, Ben, our middle guy, uh, who's now a, an amazing baseball player at LMU, if anybody wow. wants to check him out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's doing Does he's he doing want well. a career in Oh yeah, he's on scholarship. He's, he's on his... Oh, he's that way, good. We went to the Clipper game last night and I sat next to um, Tommy Lasorda. He meets Ben last night and he goes, <gasps> oh, let me see. My God. Hey, how you doing? He's 93. Oh, yeah. oh he's unbelievable. Sharp as can be. Yes. He goes, let me see your hands. So he looks at he looks at his hands. He's like, "You're a ball player," and Ben was like, "Yes, sir, I am." He says, "What what position do you play?" And Ben goes, "Center field." Where are you? He's like, "I'm at LMU, Loyola Marymount." And he was like, 
I'm going to come see you play, <gasps> and I'll tell you if you are oh a God. major leaguer or oh not. God. And I was like, oh, my what? God. What? This is crazy. <laughs> Tommy's a scout. It doesn't get much bigger than that. three, he's still out there. Right. He's like, you and Satchel Page. And then you and Page. <laughs> no, he was, he was just so sweet. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my first yeah. husband was a major league baseball player. He played for uh, USC, yeah. and then he went to the Olympics and won the gold for the USA team. Didn't you have the medal here oh, after no, no, the no. divorce for no, a no, significant no. amount of time? No, this was the story. We're at his house. He grew up in Cerritos, and he played for the Expos, ironically, because I started my TV career in Montreal. But then he played for the Marlins, and that's where we met because I was in Miami in TV. Then he got traded to the Cubs and then the Orioles. So he was with the Orioles the night Cal broke the record. So Wow. He was a really consistent player. I didn't know much about baseball, but when we got engaged, we were at his house in Cerritos going through his belongings. And I'm like, God, he's a pig. Like, shit. Oh, I'm, I'm a neat freak. I have OCD. <laughs> this is not going to work. So I'm in there getting his boxes, you know, and we're going through his closet, through piles of clothes and junk and belts and shoes. And I see this blue box at the bottom and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I lean over to get it. I open it up and I'm like, what the hell is this? Is this what I think? It's so heavy. It's the USA gold medal. I go, what the fuck is it doing in there? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Like he was that guy. You met him. Yeah. You remember. He uh, was I've like been a, meaning to make that into a belt buckle. Yeah, exactly. He went his personality. into a party with beer in his pocket. Like there is booze here. Like, yeah. You that can, is you awesome. Can relax. He's that guy. Wow. And he would chew tobacco out here where we are right now. And he would, this back house would be filled with those red cups with uh, paper towels stuffed into the bottom. So when he spit, it wouldn't bounce back oh in his face. Oh my God. So I got so used to living with red cups everywhere that when we got divorced, I was, I had flashbacks. Like I was a conversion to solo <laughs> cup. Yeah. The solo cup. Exactly. It is so disgusting, by the way. <laughs> Chewing and spitting. That's it's what they shit. did. I know. You know. I know. And I remember his mom saying, I don't know why they just, why don't they ban it? It's disgusting. I'm like, it really is. And then they're superstitious. So he's like, he had to have three bags, like by three innings. That was his thing. And if you oh, did have three. Yeah. Jeez. So I was like, I want to try you, some of that. So you know what it. they do now is it's they disgusting. have for kids. Uh, they have, uh, it's not tobacco. It looks like tobacco and it's in the bags, but it's actually um, like pork rinds or oh. uh, or like beef jerky kind of a thing. And it still makes you salivate and everything, but it doesn't have the nicotine oh, and it doesn't God. hurt your That's skin and, and all that stuff. Yeah. I remember there was a, a guy that came on Good Day LA to talk about the, to warn about the seriousness of cancer and throat cancer and blah, blah, blah. And he brought with him this poster. I'll never forget it. It was a baseball player named Bill Tuttle. And Bill Tuttle chewed so much tobacco, he got cancer, and they had to remove most of his jaw. So he's now an older man with half his face gone. I oh go, I want this poster. I'm bringing it home to my husband. Right. He's got to quit tobacco. I come home. I go, I need you to see something. I unroll it. He starts laughing. <laughs> I'm like, this is not the reaction I wanted. <laughs> he was kind of like a stone surfer without right. the stony. Like, he never smoked pot, but he was just like that guy. He's like, oh, wow, man. I'm like, like, dude, first of all, that's Tuttle. <laughs> Tuttle couldn't go to his left to save his life. <laughs> like, wouldn't run down a ball in set left center at all. <laughs> like, that was not my point. That was yeah, not Exactly. No. no, no. Look at his throat is missing. <laughs> yeah. So when you say your son is playing especially at that level that's yeah. when it starts to become you know very real yeah very real and it's and very my other son is at calabasas and he's playing and it's very real there we're visiting colleges and all stuff. i've been through this already but yeah it's crazy so um, is that son still at home you have one left at home uh, well, Jake's still at home too. He's 23 and yeah. he's, he's working, but do you feel like I don't want to... you to leave? Like I would not, uh, I don't want my kids to ever leave I would... me. I don't ever want them to freaking leave me. No, I know. And that's not healthy. Just Dr. the Drew's energy like, they bring unhealthy. to the house. It would just be yeah. odd. Look, to have Jake, no one Jake there. doesn't drive because he has epilepsy, right? Yeah, right. right. You can't. You can't. Yeah, he's he doing well. Have... He doesn't have seizures. And by the way, they, by they... the way, Uber, right? Like he's. I mean, yeah. Isn't that... So he does. I that... heard kids don't even want their license now at like sixteen. They're like, yeah, pass. My nephew yeah. put it off, but see, Uber's not technically allowed to let anybody eighteen under in the car. Right. No, but they have hop, skip, drive. But. One of our really? nephews. I didn't know. Yeah, that. but they they do. want to do Uber and they do it all the time freely. And I think they've only been but turned down. But you add up but... their ages, so there's like three thirteen year olds in the car. <laughs> there you You're go. Fine. You're, You're fine. good. They're thirty nine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. then, but they have Uber on their phone. They have Postmates. The other day, my sister has a very gated house, and she gets a ring at the gate. And it's Postmates, and she goes, "I didn't order anything. Uh, your son did." Or and she goes, <laughs> yeah. "Oh my son, did. what did he order? A cup of noodle." <laughs> That'll be $40, that, please. <laughs> Here's your so dollar ninety nine or 99 cents cup. Oh and she's like, God. we got to have a talk about Uber, Postmates. Oh, no. it, yeah. it adds up. So this is all to say that my son who's playing baseball now, he is our middle guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's now, but he's 20 yeah. and he's in college, and but he's close enough that we can see him, whatever. Anyway, when he was 13, 
he had a dream, terrible dream, and uh, such such a vivid nightmare oh, yeah. that he woke up and I was like, oh, so I'm trying to put him back to sleep. I'm rubbing his back. I'm in bed with him, and, and I see he goes, it was so I get so real. I said, tell me what it was. He goes. It was like, it wasn't my dream. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, it was me, but I was, I was like a superhero. I was jumping in and out of my friend's dreams and saving them from their worst nightmares. Oh, wow. That's, that's good. A, yeah. That's so I a was movie. like, wait a minute. That's a movie. Yeah. You stop like, dropping his back. Like, Actually, don't go to sleep. Let me, get, exactly. let me said, get a notepad. Yeah, I said, Dad, oh. daddy's going to go get his laptop. We're going to pay for college. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, cut to, hey, there's another cut to. Um, I call JJ, my best friend. Yeah. And I go, all right, what about this? Uh, it's called Dream Jumper, and it's a kid who can actually jump in and out of his friend's dreams, that's blah, blah, brilliant. blah. And he said, that is incredible, mm -hmm. but that's a graphic novel. He said, oh. start with a graphic novel. You'll own the IP. So I partnered with a guy at Comic-Con. Lucas Turnblum is this amazing illustrator and cartoonist. Oh, my God. We partnered. We worked on the book for a year, pitched it to a bunch of publishers. Scholastic was my favorite number one choice. They picked it up, and Dream Jumper became this like oh my huge God. hit. They have a graphics division of Scholastic. It's their graphic novel. And it's in the school book fair and oh talk about being a hero God. at school. Oh, Are no. you kidding me? And book two is out. So you get oh, book wow. one and book two. Wait, on. so this is a series that can continue to go. Yeah, we're working like on book he's... three and then we're trying to set it up as a, as a TV show. Or a as TV a Netflix show. Series. You and, know, let me tell you, there are ages. I watch certain shows with my kids because they're at an age where, you know, like they love anything scary, spooky. So there's, we're really limited on shows we can watch together. Yeah. I mean, and this has got a Harry, like the way Harry Potter uh, goes into the world of, you know, wizardry. wizardry, this goes into the world of dreams. When you go to sleep. Oh my God. You don't know if you're ready for a comedy tonight or am I going to be in a horror movie? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. how. And not only that, you're like, wait a minute, that's a whole world. And there, we, we created something called the Nightmare Lord and the Nightmare Lord is trying to control us in our sleep state. So when you see somebody sleepwalk, that's the Nightmare Warlord testing out their ability to control us. Uh, that's and good. who's to say we're not dreaming right now right. and then when we go to sleep, that's reality. Yeah. Like we're, that's what book that's three, we're sort of flipping the whole thing. But wow. it's it's awesome. He tries to monetize his ability with his friend. His friend's like, dude, we got to make money at this. And so, but he's this loner kid who now knows all the dark secrets about all his friends at school. So when he gets on the bus in the first, you know, of the book, book he walks on the bus and you see that kid and you know, oh, that kid's scared of this and she's scared oh, of that. So he's whatever. in their dreams. And he's in their dreams. He knows a lot about them. And then I'll tell you a little hook thing that was just so, when we came up with it, I was like, oh, that gave me chills. Is He didn't know that he comes from a long line of dream jumpers. And he was having trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. He was having these nightmares about these three kids. So he would get up in the middle of the night and draw what he was, you know, saw in his dreams. And he would draw these kids, the same kids over and over again. So his mom is like, you're not sleeping at school. You're, you're, you're lethargic, whatever. We're going to a sleep study place. You're, we're, I'm going to get you tested. I don't want the same thing to happen to, to dad to happen to you. And, and she goes, what happened? I don't want to talk about it, whatever. Anyway, they go to the sleep study place. As soon as they walk in, the guy who runs the sleep place is, turns white. He's like looking at this kid because all the people in the sleep study place have been drawing him. Oh, so that's creepy. That creepy. I did get chills. Yeah, and then that's he walks. Creepy. He walks past a few rooms and he sees the kids he's been drawing. Oh wow! And it's like, what the oh hell? Oh my god! So that's where it begins, and then he, you know, it, it's so it's, is your thirteen year old who this is based on, who's ben, now seventeen. Does yeah. he like? Um, where this is, is incredible. my Where's the money? royalty? Yes. <laughs> I need some Postmates and some Grubhub. <laughs> when I tell the story, he's like, "That's not the way it was, Dad." <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I was dreaming of baseball. Oh my Trust God, me. creative license. Uh, shh, 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 exactly. shh, stop. I was dreaming of Tuttle and his missing jaw. <laughs> Which is a nightmare in and of itself. <laughs> exactly. That's unbelievable. So, yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, it would be a TV series, yes? I think so. I'm like a Netflix series. In a perfect world, it's it really was, brilliant. by the way, it was optioned by uh, Paramount. Paramount doesn't do animated things, so uh, and I was warned of that. But it got into a little, not a bidding, it, okay. bidding war, but a lot of studios were interested before it even got published. And Paramount, and then I just got it back from Paramount. So I'm in the process of meeting a bunch of places. Okay. And, hopefully and it will it be animated, correct? So what's you interesting know, is... I was thinking about that show Goosebumps, which is not, it's a long, it's like a PG rated version of this. But I mean, it's That's live actors action, like, yeah. you know, yeah, like Ryan Gosling got his start when he was 13. It's a really interesting, and kids love that shit. Yeah, but imagine... Uh, if uh, live action 
scenes and then when you go into the dreams animated? they're animated but in that hyper realistic yeah. way that's cool that's kind of what i'm thinking that's yeah. really cool but i've got that's lucas, different lucas turnblum he's an incredible illustrator he's also a great storyteller so the two of us together yeah. have have been working on this and that's great it's been a blast Is there anything you haven't done pornography but, i don't think you've done. <laughs> well <laughs> why not, not that you know yeah. of <laughs> yeah talk about how a marriage has lasted yeah they've um, lasted 27 years exactly <laughs> but no getting back to what you said it's when these opportunities are presented you're the same way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity because everybody knows you. Yeah. And you can at least give it a good go. Yes. That's why I take advantage. I've also learned, though, to focus. And that's what JJ has taught me is like, it's okay to say no to opportunities. Just that's because, sort of my question to you. I feel yeah. like you do so much. Are you able now? Are you at a place that, uh, where you can say no? Or are you not there? I learned years ago that uh, because I created one of the first mobile coupon apps. Okay. What? Back in the I was day. reading this about Remember you. That? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The app store was starting, and my Are you, wife were you and like I, a tech geek? I was. To I'm still a total yeah. tech geek. Mm. But we're wow. walking into Bed Bath and Beyond, and I forgot the cardboard coupon yeah. bricks in the car yeah and i was like the 50 I'm like, of them we yeah, all have. and i'm so lazy to go back to the car <laughs> see and I'm like, out of necessity breeds yes. it's so true totally and i'm like why do i have to carry this shit yeah why doesn't somebody create an app where you push a button it knows where you are and it brings up all the coupons from the stores around you and if those stores don't want to participate they're not going to get your fucking Opt business. Out. Yeah. So screw them. Oh so I God. then I partnered with these guys and, and well, we how do you created... even know where to go with that? Like I could sit here and have a great idea and go, how the fuck do I execute it? Because you knew where to go. I'll tell you what happened. So, so I got contacted on Twitter. The guy was following me and he's like, I'm a big fan, blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm a programmer. And this is the beginning of Twitter. What? I listen to people. People send me stuff. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. You the see it. Is, you listen. I have 1.2 or 3 million people it's following huge me. following. Yeah. But they're not all engaged. They're all yeah, they're yeah. fans, yeah. whatever. You know, I'll send a charity thing out and I'll get right. 25 retweets. And it's a real mixed bag of people, right? Yeah. Which is so great. Anyway, back in the day when I was <laughs> just starting and the guy reaches out to me, uh, Augustrometer, he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. And he says, hey, I, I like what you're doing with the band. I want to create an app for the band where people can then you know, opt in to donate. And it's just an oh, ongoing. so brilliant. Yeah. And I said, great. Well, Apple didn't have a charity side and they still don't. No apps or charity apps, if Whoa, you think about that's it. That's interesting. None of them. Yeah, no. That makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. And there are websites, but not apps. And so uh, um, maybe inside apps now, I don't know. But back then, so I was like, oh, but I do have an idea for a coupon app. And he had the ability to write the code. Execute it. And this other guy, um, Rick Yeager, who's now a great friend too, he was like, I'll design it. And Rick is the most brilliant. He works for huge companies doing logos and web wow, design and wow. stuff. And so, so where do you go from there after it's programmed and then you've got the look? Of so the... by the way, my podcast corner stories is all about this, about small Sorry. business. Small business is throwing your whole life into something. And there's mm -hmm. a passion. Go on and you go down Ventura Boulevard, go into Hollywood, oh, yeah. go anywhere, go in and ask for the owner, ask for the story. All Everybody has are, a story. And they're fascinating. Yeah. My uncle and he wanted the money back. And, yeah. and, the, and the landlord didn't want to rent to me because I was a, this. And yeah. It's like, it's fascinating. It's the American dream. Yeah. And it's like taking advantage of an opportunity and saying, I don't want to work nine to five. I'd rather work 24 hours a day for myself so, yeah. rather than eight hours a day for someone Be else. Be your own yeah. boss. Yeah. yeah. So that's, the, and then this is my story on that app was now I've got the app built and it's chicken and the egg. You as a consumer are not going to use an app unless it's got great coupons on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Companies aren't going to use the app to put coupons on unless I got a million people. So, uh, hello, Martha Stewart. Hello, Ellen. Hello, anybody wow. I can. I came on you, you, the shows and, you know, we, we talked about this yeah. before. You know, I went on Fox. I went on KTLA, whatever. And, I'm, and soon I had a million and a half people downloaded the app. That's and then, and I went out to all the companies. Container Store was the first. Oh, but I, I had done funny. a charity with them and I said, guys... Just give me what coupons that it you normally have. It wasn't Bed Bath and Beyond, oh the God. origin. I know. I mean, you would think that was we did synergy. It. Yeah, it was. <laughs> exactly. right. Come on. It was. Uh, uh, I mean, we had all of them. We had all, a lot of them. Were and, they? Uh, did they jump on board right away? They knew, or were some of them like, oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, it was the beginning of that. Yeah. Type of technology never tied to the POS system. So oh, my God. some you know pimple faced yeah. kid. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's a big whitehead. Exactly. <laughs> Tuttle was at the register, <laughs> and I said, and then and they would go, I don't know how to do. I just use this coupon, and they would scan the similar 20% off, 10% off coupon, but then it wasn't a unique uh, UPS code, so I didn't get the credit for it oh. on Yowza. It was a really tough thing to overcome. We eventually wow. overcame it, and then we I sold the business. I, I sold that. But oh my, my point God. is like, that I- You're a businessman too. Yeah, but what is a, this, this guy, this actor on a show, what does he know about coupons and- 
you know, so, I mean, I, I was, I'm really good at marketing, yeah. really good at it. Like when I was on Ellen, I was like, um, I said, Yowza, it's called Yowza and it's a really great app and it's mobile coupons. And today, everybody in the audience gets Yowza for free. And they were all like, oh, oh and then Ellen so was like, isn't it, is it free? free. <laughs> <laughs> but like having Martha Stewart go, Yowza, say it, Yowza. Oh, it just feels good to one. say it. How I'm did like, you even come up with a name? It's great. Because nobody um, else has yowza. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's like a positive affirmation. Yeah. It's an old term. Yeah. Um, I just, I came across I it. it. Yeah. Because nothing, the app itself is not like the coupon app. The You know, yeah. they all have different names. So it's got to be catchy. And it's you got to gotta trick people. Yeah. Talkaboutit.org uh, is my foundation, right? It's not called Talk About Epilepsy. Right. If I did uh, that, no one that, would go. Exactly. Because you've got, think about that. It's yeah. like you were talking about all of the different foundations that have backing. So, you know, their autism, cancer, breast cancer, you could break it all down. Um, you're so right. I didn't really see anything about epilepsy. So when you go to this website, it directly is about epilepsy. Yeah, talk about it. I was speaking um, at the National Walk in DC and I, and I speak at AES, which is the American Epilepsy Society. And I'm doing everything I can to raise money, whatever. And every doctor, every patient, everybody said, we don't talk about this enough. We need to talk about it. We need so to talk true. about it. And Cameron Boyce, you know, passes oh, yeah. away. Sentence. And, and oh, now we're talking brilliant. about it for a little bit. And then, you know, Jeez. it's just, it's, it's so sad. It's like, we need to get ahead of this. Epilepsy kills. Yeah. That happens. And it happens way too much. And it's in their sleep a lot of the times. It's mm -hmm. called SUDEP. S-U-D-E-P. Sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. My God, it's just like SIDS. Yes. Like in, in infants. It's and exactly. They... That's what my, my next thing I was going to say is it's like SIDS. You're having a seizure in your sleep and, you know, sometimes I guess, you know, saliva comes out of your mouth and then that forms a barrier that you can't breathe and you're oh. having a seizure. No one's with you yeah. and you're in your pillow and, you're, oh and you God. can't breathe. Or oh sometimes the brain is seizing so much and it tells the heart we're done. That's it. Oh Stop. my God. So do you think that's what happened with Cameron? Uh, I don't know. But I saw I, his parents on a show and I, I mean, oh, they're heartbreaking, heartbreaking. They have their own foundation. It's, it's a yeah, suit up related yeah, thing. And, yeah. uh, they're wonderful people. He was God, what a rock incredible. star that kid was. Oh, oh my God. That's, that's one of the worst losses. Yeah. It's just it was very sad. Yeah. And, but made an impact while he was here. You know, you, and, you're going to look at exactly. Uh, and he could be a, a face for this too, yes, yes. you know? But God forbid, and I'm a member of a club. I don't want anyone to oh, ever absolutely. be a member of, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And so, yep. but I'm doing what I can. And you go to talk about it. You see every big star I've ever worked with. I roped them in. I, I you know, I worked on uh, the star mm -hmm. is born and I'm in the car and Gaga says, Hey, thanks for what you're doing for epilepsy. And I said, Oh my God. Whoa, what do you, how do you know about that? Well, my dad or I, no, it wasn't even dad. Or it was somebody relative who had epilepsy or something seizures years and years ago. doesn't affect their family anymore, but I, I just know about it. And, what, and I was like, she's so incredible by the way the rock just star. amazing <laughs> literally she said if i could ever help let me know and i was like Whoa. i'm gonna take you up on that like, how how quickly do i jump on that? Yeah. yeah so right now it's just the end of the omaze oh campaign mm -hmm. omaze oh is a an engine to raise money for uh, charities and stuff if you go to omaze.com oh slash gaga you won't believe it. It's they'll fly you in from anywhere in the world you buy raffle tickets to win there's still plenty of them left they'll fly you to vegas you meet Gaga, you go backstage in her tour. What? You see both shows. She's got two shows there. Oh my God. And it's it's incredible Gaga experience. That's insane. Yeah. The and, Gaga experience. I love that. Yeah. Oh and my so gosh. she did that. Jennifer Garner just finished one. We did uh, omaze.com slash Jen. It's over, but it was incredible. It was, they fly uh, th these two winners, these women, uh, mother and daughter from Massachusetts one, and they got to fly out to LA and bake chocolate chip cookies in oh, her with, kitchen with her with her and Shut that up. video will be up i, I want that's so cool yeah jen was like you gotta come and bradley who lives in that neighborhood bradley yeah. almost came over which oh, was amazing. the mother they would have passed out <laughs> yeah, exactly. that would have been the end of that they're like forget the cookies yeah. exactly <laughs> this is enough um and that was amazing and then i just finished for star wars i did omaze.com slash greg if you go on there you can see um we had these people fly in and they went to the premiere with me they went to the party they were on the carpet it was awesome oh my god so this money what you generate goes yeah. towards the foundation for research for finding a cure finding a cure everything and we're, i mean I, my my side of his awareness doesn't cost anything you know yeah. for me to do the you yeah. know i have my studio so i do the uh, live stream from there yeah. it's set up for a band so you know so you can jam anytime yeah and it's a studio it's a recording studio professional whatever as a matter of fact uh five for fighting was just in the rehearsing they're going on tour I'm, oh that's great that, that, for the me that's studio. like 
what? <laughs> and there's a friend, uh, uh, Carlos and Priscilla, that I work with. Carlos is an incredible producer. He produces now all the Red Bull stuff. And he works with me on movies and TV yeah. stuff and commercials that I do. And he got married. And they said, is there any way? My building is so cool. It's, it's as cool as this. Like, it's, it's so beautiful. It's so cool. Oh. And he said, can we have the reception here? Oh, and it's in wow. North Hollywood in a building that you would never expect. Right. And I'm like, hell yeah. So they decorated the whole place. It was so beautiful. That's so cool. But the night before they're setting up and five for fighting's rehearsing in the same space. <laughs> and I was like, that's your wedding gift. There You're you welcome. Go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just add event planning and space that's to your just, resume. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Good for you. You've been insanely busy. I'm just, but again, just taking advantage of opportunities and I'm trying. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, you're so busy. It's like, yeah. You well, know what's what? the next project for you? Because you just did Star Wars. It's, it's everything's. Star Wars and then uh, and Castle Rock season two. Mm -hmm. I'm the sheriff of Castle Rock killing people, which is what? kind of fun. It's another side of me. You know? Oh, and a it's dark evil side. I always feel like you kind of play kind of a good guy. Yeah. I do. It's the unexpected. Good. I like I've, I've, it. I've, oh. done, I've, done, I've delved into that. I don't like doing a very real version of that. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I did a movie years ago that I will not name that is not a great movie but I I played this killer and it was and it was terrible and oh, I was, I was it hard for you to shake it after no but it was it's not fun it's yeah. not fun to like yeah go up to somebody and then just slit her throat I'm yeah. like ah, it's not I me like it. yeah and and then and by the way and then going back to David Foster I'm working with him you know he's producing these two songs and he says to me by the way you worked with my daughter and I was like what and he goes, yeah, you, you were she the there. one that you killed in the yeah. movie. He goes, <laughs> no. like Sarah. She had that dog collar on. She was chained to the wall. Oh my god! And you threw food on her, and then you killed her. And I was like, oh, was yeah. your daughter? She's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> What am I supposed to say? That's why you're like, Lovely no, girl. I don't want to be and By the way, great actress. She's so good. And I'm like, oh, I feel terrible. I never want to do that again. I just don't like that. Yeah. I do get people coming to me for because it's unexpected. It's like, oh, I want him to be the, the guy. And then at the end of the movie, you're like, no. Yeah. That's fine, but not a killer the whole way through. It's, it's a little much. Are you yeah. good with the audition process? Or are you one of those people that gets asked to do stuff now and you don't have to audition a lot? Where are you uh, at? That never changes. No, yeah. you'll always... I think... And also on the other side of the camera, when I, I want to see people, I want to, you know, mm -hmm. like I know you, I would call you up and go, I got a role. You're done. Mm -hmm. That's you already great because we're have. friends yeah. and I know you can do it. But on the other side, if you don't know somebody that well, you want to see what they're going to do to yeah. it. Yeah. And also even still, I would be like, Hey, do you want to come in? Let's, let's, let's just you and me, let's just go over it together. And if, if you're not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. Then it's not right. Yeah. So I always have to meet and, and do that. Um, the low end stuff. Um, I did a movie called Big Ass Spider, which is like a cult classic, and it's <laughs> unbelievably fun. So great. I haven't seen that. Is it oh. age appropriate for our yeah. little guys? Yes. Okay. Oh. Just the oh. title alone. I love it the is title. So okay. great. It's me and Lombardo Boyard who steals the movie. He's one of the best actors I've ever worked with, and uh, Lynn Shea, who's incredible. Oh my gosh, she's always in those horror movies. She's amazing. Oh, she's yeah. incredible. Yeah, and, she's uh, always in Insidious or those ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's yeah, so yeah. good. And I just we actually just finished another movie that I produced and starred in Kevin Smith's in called Max Reload and the Nether Blasters and it's a throwback movie all about gaming and stuff. Oh, that's, that's great. That's coming out soon. Fun. That's really fun. I Because I got to say Ready Player One was freaking incredible. I loved it. Amazing. I was obsessed with that movie. Yeah. I'm really, like, how the really hell great. is this not like a massive hit? I'm sorry, is it not? Like, I don't know. It's freaking great. It, it was a big hit. It was? It was a okay. big, big hit. Our I, movie is, it's it's similar in that we go into a game. I love that. But it's the sort of low-end, you know, yeah. sci-fi version of that. That's very cool. Which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't do all those tricks that they pulled off in Ready Player One. <laughs> exactly. You don't have that budget. Isn't there an app for that now? <laughs> I should you make you one. Need? Make an app yeah. for it. Um, but Hassie Harrison is in it, who, who's, uh, she's a rising star. She's amazing. So we you, got You are so people. positive about everybody. I'm thinking Hollywood is a place that gets a lot of bad raps for being a cesspool and being a shit place to work and the whole, you know, everyone's like, oh, you didn't know about Harvey Weinstein. Everybody knew about him. He was a dick and nobody said oh, yeah, anything. I have I'm my like, drawer of people I'll never work with yeah, again, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. But why talk about those people? But you're here today. Yes. And that's why I, I have way, to commend you. By the way, if you were one of those people, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> so, I love you. you, get, you yeah. It's true. You get a roster of people that you're like, it's negative energy or it's just not my, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Yeah. 
I mean, how many people do you have? You in that both, drawer? Yeah. We're the same age. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 10 years younger, remember? That's true. 1976. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but it's what you play. It's what you play. It's not exactly. how you are. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that level of movie. I do get offers. So someone will say, hey, I want you to make this. Those I tend to say, can I be a producer on it? Can I help cast it? Right. And I really, but I really mean it. It's and not you, just you a get, name. Yeah, you get involved. If it's something that I love and now, I want to do. when you go to do the Comic-Cons or you're in another country and it's all Star Wars, are they the most passionate because Star Wars has been around forever and it's just, it's, oh, it's generational. Star so Wars fans? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Heroes was like that too though. Oh, that's true. And wasn't oh. Alias probably as well? I mean. Alias was, um, Alias people were like, oh, I loved that show. What was it about? The, like, there's so many things that people are like, I don't get the thing with yeah. the, and the box. And the, what was that? And the big red ball. And, I, like, I, and, and they, by the way, they ask me, like, as if I know the answers well, to these the things. Oh, I've seen them. They're very passionate. They're they put you on the, the spot. Same way. And you're like, lost? I was killed I'm instantly. Like, yeah, I was the exactly. pilot. Hello. After the first hour, I stopped watching too. Okay. <laughs> if I'm not in it, it's, it's no. I love that show. That, yeah. that show was like, you know. Well, I watched incredible. everything. All, yeah. I, there's a movie that I, because I love Judd Apatow. And Judd does uh this is 40 and oh yeah paul rudd and leslie manning and her so their daughter's good. obsessed with lost which i loved as that a little side storyline because of jj abrams yeah. like fuck jj abrams because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. sick of you watching this um oh i've had references like mindy k like like she she I did this her. like she's incredible and all of a sudden i got calls i wasn't watching her show her show yeah and i got a call she was like i need someone to be my greg grunberg <laughs> on the show and i'm like what did she just say she's like everybody needs their greg grunberg and oh I was that's like, so great what what's a better compliment than that it was the sweetest thing that ever. should hear your voicemail now <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. and then going way back so jj did a movie it was with will smith believe it or not and uh if you look up jj abrams acting credits um jj acted in it yeah and he was what? brilliant like really? so good it was a movie about a, a kid who goes to college uh, and will smith goes to all these parents of these kids that are going to college together. Six degrees of separation. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. That yeah. was didn't great. even look it up. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So JJ's in it. He's one of the kids. All these parents get fooled by Will Smith, who's brilliant in this movie. Anyway, there's a scene yeah. where all the kids are sitting on the quad in college, and they're all looking through old yearbooks, trying to find him, going, did we go to school like, with yeah, this guy? Yeah, who's this guy? And they're looking through, looking for the win. Every take. JJ said, do you guys remember this guy, Greg Grunberg? <laughs> no. And I, was no I, I was nobody. I mean, I hadn't done anything. That's JJ and I are living together. Hysterical. Yeah, he's young, I'm young, and he gets this opportunity. And he said it every take. So it's, so they in, had, it's, it's in, the, in movie. the movie. That's freaking brilliant. Yeah, and they just did a review of Star Wars. And they, there's a, an article where they said, all the, um, <laughs> what do they call them when it's like the Brangelina, like you put yeah, the two together. names together. Yeah. Uh, so it's yeah. like Kylo and, and yeah. Ray and whatever. And they said, what's, and they were like from 10 to one, what are the matches that you're going to see? Absolutely going to see in, in Rise of Skywalker. And number one was J.J. Abrams and Greg Grunberg. <laughs> They're like, you, they have to be like J.J. That's so great. And we just love working together. And it's just the best. I can't. I love that story about him saying, what about this guy, Greg Grunberg? Oh That's my God. so great. I'm going to go great. back and find. That is effing brilliant. I, I, I also did a Coen Brothers movie. This is this oh, tells you all about JJ. Okay, oh, brilliant. I did a Coen Brothers movie with Tom Hanks. It was called Lady Killers. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I remember just that. was flipping and it was on. Oh was my it? god, J.K. Simmons, like amazing. Oh my god, so he's it, brilliant. They had these Wayans little mini and... like movies at the beginning. There weren't movies, but sections of the movie where they set up each character. J.K. Simmons was a prop guy on a movie, right? Oh so god. I'm the director of that commercial. <laughs> So he's, it's a dog commercial and this dog is running and it's, it's a war scene and the dog's got this dog food and he's running and he gets to the thing and then all of a sudden the dog collapses and you hear cut, cut. That's where I channeled Joel Silver, by the way. If you look, oh God, I'm wearing a big brilliant. bulky shirt, whatever. So I'm in this movie. It was the dream of all dreams, you know, saying it's a Coen Brothers, Tom Hanks movie. Call all the relatives. Oh, yeah. No one saw that movie. Like, no one. I remember it. Coen Brothers are brilliant. They're friggin' brilliant. But prior to that, I'm going into audition. I go into audition and... Is this to play the director play of the, the movie? Director. Okay. And uh, I made it past casting director. You know, I, was, I hadn't done anything. And uh, this casting director was like, oh, I really love what you did. And she goes, I'm gonna bring you back and meet the Coens. And I was like, oh my oh God, God. Like, now I'm in. Like, yeah. that's it. If yeah. I get it, I get it, whatever, but I'm gonna be able meet to be the in the Coens. room with them. Yeah. So come to the studio. So I get to the studio and they said, it's just you and another guy. And I was like, oh, that's even better news. So I'm sitting there waiting and all of a sudden, JJ walks in. My no best way. friend. What? It's between me and JJ. Shut up. Yeah, so they wanted me, but then they were like, wait a minute, this filmmaker who people had known, he did a little TV, <sighs> yeah. whatever. 
And they saw Six Degrees and they were like, oh, he could be a great, and he's also a director. So why not have a director as a director? Let's you know? get it on the nose. Yeah. 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 So JJ's like, I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing here? It was like, <laughs> wah, 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 wah. you're like, you're about to tank this audition, best friend. <laughs> Son of a bitch. What to do. So they go, JJ, why don't you come in? So JJ goes in and I just hear laughing <sighs> and I hear all this stuff and I'm like, Ugh. and I, I, at this point, like I was like, whatever it doesn't, yeah. you know, but I really wanted this, obviously he comes out, he, he goes, all right, I'll see you later. And he leaves quickly. He's my best friend. I'm mm. like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you tell me how it went? Yeah. What's going on? He leaves. I go in and the Coens are like, well, you got a great friend there. And oh I was my like, God. Oh, thanks. They said, no, no, no. You got a great friend. I said, what do you mean? He goes, he came in and he said, if you don't hire Greg, this movie's going to fucking <laughs> suck and walked out. Shut up. Yeah. He said, hello, I'm a fan. Oh my God. Whatever. And then he, and then he said, he goes, that's your guy. He's no. like, that's your guy. Yeah. And oh that's my, what a generous and he's guy. your guy. You're and he's other, my yeah. guy. You but, never hear about stories like this in but, Hollywood, but you guys have been friends forever. Yeah, but all the acting, all the movies, all the TV shows, I mean, Felicity, Alias, yeah. Lost, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, my, my career I owe to this guy, uh, to my best friend. But forget all of that. That's all icing on the cake. That's nothing. When you're in Chicago and your son's in, in surgery yeah. and you don't know who to call and you don't know who to talk to and your wife, your yeah. wife oh my like, God. That's my guy. Yeah. And that's He just happens to have all this other stuff. You guys have been friends since you were five. None of it's important. That is crazy. We need each other just as much. I mean, I I joke about these movies wouldn't be the same. The truth is like when I go to London and and we're shooting, I'm on set with him every minute that I'm there. And we go to dinner. Even in the scenes that you're not, like you just hang, he's your your guy. Yeah. You're together. It's your buddy. It's your best friend. Yeah. And everybody loves him. Everybody, he's the best. He's got such a great reputation. Ugh. Do you think he's on par with, because, you know, I was watching this documentary on Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. and I was watching it and I realized he's my favorite fucking director of all time. Like it just took me to watch a documentary to figure that out. Because yeah. I'm like, I love that movie and I love that and I love, and that, oh my God. Incredible. Incredible. And uh, do you think he's on par? Because I do. I feel like he's on par to be, because he's young still. Like how old is he? He's our age. Wow. Yeah. So 1976. Yes, he is. yes, he is very young. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> He's still a kid. Um, he looks it, but uh, he does. I think there are very few people that can do what Spielberg does and what JJ does. And like Spielberg will get a lot of grief for hey, the movie didn't go deep enough. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Or like I just saw a review of Rise of Skywalker and I could not believe this was their criticism. It gave the fans everything they wanted. That was their complaint. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, it did. That was the, the point. Exactly. This movie, I am telling it's you, fans. I am not going to say one thing Don't. about it other than the fact that it is everything you want and so much more. It, it Like, I was, my jaw was, I, and that doesn't happen. I was wow. like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah, I read the script. Yeah, I'm in the movie. Oh, it's different to see it. Oh, yes. So and the first time you saw it was at the premiere? I couldn't make the cast screening. And I got oh. people calling me, oh my you God. know, the cast. Like, Daisy's like, holy shit, man, you're so good in the movie. And I was like, oh I haven't God. seen it yet, you know? <laughs> and so we all saw it at the same time. It was, it was magical. And with it my kids. It looked magical. It yeah. looked, I saw, you know, all the clips and it looked beautiful i mean it's so much better to see it in canada i know we all can't do that but if you're gonna see it see it in canada well you know we've got those 4d (laughs) seats that's where i'm going to see it with my son because my son is so excited wait you're seeing 4d it's called 4d up there yeah they're way more advanced it's a chair (laughs) what is that so basically they give you a helmet and you're flying with me the chair basically the chair shakes yeah okay and and you it goes back when they go back wow yeah it's insane I know. I'm so excited. Ooh, that's really cool. Yeah. It's more expensive, but who gives a shit? It's worth it. Yeah. You get the experience and yeah. Is it a boozy play? Like you can, is it like I, one of those I you hope can have it drinks and be. stuff? My sister knows me. It better be. She got the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be happy at all. Well, that's I just awesome. think you're amazing and I want to thank oh, you for coming by. Thank you. You've got so much shit. Like I could have just been like, oh, Greg, come by and I'll just put the microphone on. We've to do this again. On. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. By the way, all right, plug, ready? Yes. Uh, Stars Born. I know we're done. So Star sorry Wars, to yeah. run no, over. No, no, but, no. no. Uh, Stars Born. Yes. Do you remember Bradley Cooper's car, his character's red truck, that F 150 yeah, classic yes. old pickup truck? Don't say truck. that's your truck. Oh, yeah. 
What? I pulled up one day. That's outside right now? No, outside oh, okay. right now is my, uh, I have a 96 Ford Bronco. So you're into the trucks. The, you know, Ooh. the um, yeah. OJ. OJ, nice. yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's, I not love white. it. I love those. No, it's not white. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, but Al Collins is driving me. He's out there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> He's your driver right now. You see? That's but so I'm, awesome. I pulled up to, to my trailer. And they're um, like, we found our car. Yeah. Gaga's Lambo was there. And Bradley's g Wax in there. And, and then all the other actors. And I pull up in this like... <laughs> oh, I love know. it. And I pull up and he comes out. He's like, what the hell, dude? I said, yeah, yeah I have this thing. Oh my God. And I love old trucks. And so he so, right away recognized yeah, he and said, like, we're putting it. That's in the what I want is my character car. They had another one, a really great old truck, but it had newer wheels. I like making it as old school as, yeah, as original as possible. Yeah. So he obsessed over it and I was like, yeah, rent it. That's crazy. And they it. I like, There's still that. the businessman. Rent it. Yeah. I'm not going to live it for free. Well, yeah, yeah, rent we'll it. negotiate. Yeah. <laughs> well, because they would have rented a car anyway for yeah. it. But <laughs> the great <laughs> shot is, the, is and it's sad. It's mm. a yes. spoiler at it's this the point. one where they, the He's garage. hanging himself yep. in the garage and the Pass, dog. Yep. Uh, so I'm watching me. the movie. Freaking Last me. story. I promise. Oh my God, we can be here all day. Watching the Watching the movie. And uh, this is crazy. That shot happens. My truck, the dog, you know what's happening in the garage. And this old couple next to us, this guy who was, um, what's it called? MSRP? No, what's, oh, the, what's the, 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 no, when he's like, ASMR. They eat. ASMR. ASMR, ASMR yes, MSRP, whatever. The, the sticker it's price so of a car, whatever this. I can't this. stand it. Oh, it's the worst. And he's like. <laughs> oh, no, oh, I would die. Shut he's up. eating and I'm like, ugh. But then the zinger comes. He looks at and sees that shot and <laughs> says to his wife, oh, look, the dog got out. <laughs> the main character is killing Hate himself. Yourself. And that's the what he's dog. worried about. I immediately pick up my phone oh my and I text Bradley <laughs> and he goes, dude, I was in the editing room and I knew someone was going to say that. <laughs> He wasn't alone. I no. felt the same. I was already sad about his demise, and then the dog it threw me over the top. Oh. I convulsed at the end of that movie. I convulsed, and I, I, it's because so I probably good. didn't remember a lot about the Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson I saw when I was very, like, I was a right. kid. Yeah, I completely forgot the end. I, I just thought it was layered. It was so beautiful. I loved your storyline. I loved Dice's storyline. Of course, Bradley and Gaga were ridiculous because they made it modern and they threw. And he's at Coachella, and I'm going. Is that really wrong? Like who was singing at Coachella? Yes. I had to look every, as I'm watching the movie. I'm stopping it. I'm researching. <laughs> yeah, and the concert, by it. the way, in um, was it Coachella? In Europe. In, oh, they played in Europe. Coachella, but yeah. then in Europe, Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah, Glastonbury. Yeah, so nice. they played at Glastonbury, and there's a couple that own the festival. Bradley told me they contacted them and said, "Hey, we want to play a couple songs." And the guy was like, "No, I mean, <gasps> I've already got bands, but it's Lady Gaga." And Lady it's Gaga me. and Bradley Cooper. No, he said, "If you find a band that'll let you take that <gasps> first in. five minutes." And so Willie Nelson's son, Lucas Nelson, oh. uh, was a part of this whole thing and in the band and had a lot to do with the music in the movie. He's a brilliant musician. Calls his dad. And he was like, yeah, no problem. But they only had five minutes. So all so of that, that stuff oh was, I mean, obviously they rehearsed it He's, in a very similar stage. Oh my God. But it no, looks no, no. so beautiful. The, the light flares sick. and the, oh my uh, okay, God. Okay, first of all, he encompasses, you're like, this is a rock star. He reminded me of my ex-husband, his dad. He looks, he looked mm. like, I was like, oh my God. I wasn't going to bring it up. No, but... everybody did. Who saw it? They're like, whoa. Twinning. Oh, that's really? exactly what my ex-husband, uh, bar none. They, they, everyone used to say, you look like a cross between Bradley Cooper and uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Then when he went darker in that movie. He was movie, very unattractive. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Was, oh my but God. when he went darker in that movie, Bradley did, that's when it jarred. The I longer was like, hair. Oh yeah. my God. But anyway, he had rock star moves. He had, everything was so perfect uh, and then he could play drunk really well i'm like this is a guy who yeah. and so then i'm like he has to be nominated for everything he has but to not be. just play drunk he changed his voice he went down oh like my he, god i was like oh I my god like, did yeah, he come do on set. sam elliott like he that yeah, was, it was kind of a, like i how guess do yeah that? i mean it, yeah but I mean, he went down an octave like but he, he was talked. direct in that he'd be like oh. come on set and go all right, so what I want you to do now is I need you to get in the thing. She's going to get in the car. And, the whole, and I'm like, wow. Oh, okay. Um, Greg, Whoa. that vibration was very satisfying. Was that satisfying? <laughs> that was yeah, great. I, can, I can go there. I can go there. <laughs> he, uh, That's that, incredible. So he had yeah. to kind of stay in character, if you will. And he then, just didn't want to pop in and out of voice. Here's what fascinates mm. me. He's an actor. He's directing this incredible movie. The song is sick. The song mm. is so beautiful. And then he gets in front of the Glastonbury, thousands of people, and you've got five minutes. Oh, gee, no pressure. I know. It's and, amazing and it's like, it's like to just, me. Dang, dang, yeah. dang. You're like, holy this crap. Hardcore. Immediately know. What did the audience do? Like, were they like 
That's Bradley. Like, did they I have any know. idea? I wasn't there, but it must have been incredible. <laughs> you weren't I, there. I wasn't there. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, when he gets off stage, that's that's in the LA here. <laughs> sure. I will tell you a great story though. We shot in front of that beautiful supermarket in Echo Park. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there eating Cheetos, and I'm not supposed to turn around, and she's belting it out. I mean, I'm the biggest Gaga fan. Are you kidding me? Yeah, like ever? I sick. love her so much, and she is singing. And then between takes, she just keeps singing. And it's two in the morning and she's just singing and they're setting up cameras, whatever. And she sings, sings, sings. And all of a sudden from down the street, you hear, shut the fuck <laughs> up. Like it was like being in New York. You know, somebody, they like don't Lady know it's Gaga. Lady Gaga giving them a private they concert. Care. They well, just I love think the story. You know, some drag queen down the street <laughs> singing. I, I love the story that I think Bradley was on Howard Stern talking about it, but he had brought in Lady Gaga and told her to take off her makeup because he said, I need you stripped down. And yeah. she was like, oh, I don't know about that. And boy, she's like more beautiful without it. Like oh, I loved her scenes where I she's in the totally dark hair. I agree. Ooh. Also, She's how so brave beautiful. is it for her yep. to actually, and it's not poking fun. It's actually saying there is this element of the business is taking yeah. someone like me yeah. and turning them into, turning them into the star and yep. saying, dye your hair and you need dancers. There you are and, on a billboard and you're like unrecognizable. That's a huge part of her career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said to me, I don't know how you do it. I mean, you, you become all these different, and I'm like, what oh are you God. talking so about? So do you. So do you. And she goes, yeah, I guess I have killed Gaga many times. Like she just becomes this. Different thing. I've no, never worn a meat dress. I, mean, I was so, just going to say the meat dress. Who could forget? Halloween. <laughs> exactly. Well, when she came out, you weren't quite sure what she was about. And then you're just you're the layers upon layers. She's insane. I mean, well, she's that's got. that's marketing. Yeah. But more than that. Talent. It's, it's talent. Pure the talent to back that up. You know? She's got. Well, and so do you, my dear. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for taking up all of my time today. <laughs> my uh, pleasure. I love you, Greg. Uh, I feel like I've known you forever and so I'm so thankful that you came to you, hang out today. You have been throughout all these years every single thing you do and you touch you're authentic Aww. and that's what I love about you. Thank you. You're beautiful blah 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 all that stuff. <laughs> Everybody loves you. You're hilarious Aww. but you're also so real and I and that's why I will always forever support everything you do. Thank Aww. you so I love you Greg Grunberg. Thank you for coming Thank by. You. You're the best. Oh that was such bullshit. I didn't mean any of it. Me either. Not a word of it. Not a word. <laughs> Can't stand the guy. <laughs> Can't stand him.